So this is spirit. <laughs> okay, I was gonna stop. All right, you stop. Go. This is spirit, and she's my best friend, and she is one of um, the horses on the show. She's my friend because she is so good, and she listens to me. Even when I put her braid up, she listens. When I say stop, she stops moving while I'm putting her braid up. <laughs> Every time I try to make knots around on her, yeah. then she always freaks out because she doesn't like so she can um, so I can pull her around. Can I start now? Are you ready? Mm -hmm. High five? Okay, great. Hey everyone, uh, this is me, Phil, one of the trainers at home with my daughter, Ella. Say hi. Hi. And we've already been introduced to Spirit. And what I think we're going to do is, we're, this episode is either going to be called, um, if a four-year-old can do it, then you can do it too. Or it's going to be called, see, four-year-olds can't do it. Be easy on yourself. And we're in, where are we right now? At her house. But where specifically? Where, which room are we in? My room. Yeah, and you can see that says Ella up above. Point up. Yeah, but we're going to be looking at tying some knots. I'm going to teach some knots. How we teach knots. Not how knots get tied, but how we get teach knots as high five trainers. I'm also going to teach knots in a different way than I tie them. So that's important to know as well. So what's up, Ella? Um, okay, You're, so this is what you need. These are the um, tools you need so you can play along at home. This is what you're going to need, a length of rope. Um, I'm going to be using, and Ella's going to be using, and Spirit's going to be using nine millimeter rope. Um, I cut it often in about six foot lengths, so for teaching purposes. And some terminology that we're going to learn about knot tying. And I'm going to take us through the figure eight fan. So if you tie those knots, this is good for you. And these are some terms, and I want you to try and repeat these back to me now so that we'll know, know you're listening. When we bring the rope together and we make this shape, this is called a bite of rope. What's it called? A bite. A bite. So can you make one of these for me? Perfect. And then if you do this and cross the two strands together, we call this, and I can see through it, we call this a loop. We twist it and then bring them together. It starts to pull the strands actually into a loop anyway, but as I bring my hands. Yeah, good job, B. So it makes that loop. Right? So bring it together as a bite twist the strands, bring your hands together, it tends to form a loop and you can look through it. The note when you're holding the loop is just trying to identify the strand that's the short one. We, we would tend to call this potentially the working end with everything on the ground we call the standing end. So identify where your working end is. Is it away from your body? So this one is away or is it when I make my loop this way, my working end is closer when I bring it to my face. So the key piece to make it overhand though, is you figure out which one it is. And it's, so if it's away, you're gonna bring it 180 degrees, the working end, and you're gonna poke through the end, and you're gonna pull, and it's gonna make this overhand, which looks like a pretzel. Yeah, is that a pretzel shape? It looks like, um, like our hot pretzel, or like um, this. Yeah. Sort of like a heart, so if I pinch the bottom here, then it would look more like a heart, right? Yeah. Okay, so your turn. Try to see if you can do an overhand. Okay, great. And then you're going to take this end here. And because this is at the front, you're going to go 100. So you're going to go through here, poke the end, and then pull. You did it. All right, so we've got our overhand or a pretzel. Right, undo it and do it for me again. See if you can do it again. Awesome. And just a note, this is the first time she's trying all this, right? Never done this before. It's not like we prepared it ahead of time. So good job, B. High five. Overhand, done. Next, we're going to now do a figure eight. And this time, make the loop. Identify where your working end is. And instead of going 180 degrees from that point, so because it's 
away from me going to the front. I'm going to go all the way around 360, put the end through, the pull, and now I get an eight. Yeah, sometimes you have to swap your hands. Yep, and pull. And show the camera. There's an eight. Okay, it looks like zero. Now, you know if you get it wrong on this one, either if you make and you do it, you just get the overhand. That's it, there you go. Or if sometimes what you do is you go too far around and you make what I refer to as the figure nine, which just is nothing. You've just gone too far. Can you look for it like this? Oh, I'd like to. <laughs> I never, never thought to do that. But you're right. If you take an eight and you, you open up, through both of the you kind of look like a superhero or something, right? Yeah. Wow. Figure eights, done, high five, boom. This time we're gonna make it trickier. You ready for trickier? And then we're gonna end it here with trickier. And guess what? This next one I'm gonna teach you, then you'll be able to tie it onto spirit. And now we're gonna hold both strands at the same time like this. So you've got like the tails on one side and then you've got this, what is called a, Bite on the other hand. Yep. I got it. Good. Let go of this hand. Let go of that one so it's hanging loose. There we go. Okay. Make a loop, right? And then with your bite, we're going to go all the way around. Yeah. Oh, we lost a part, but it's almost. Yeah. Bite through the holes. Pull these and pull these. Bingo. And what we've got there is called a figure eight on a bite. Now, look. What could you do with that? Where could you put it? Yeah, around spirit. And there you go. You've created a little uh, hold on to your spirit rope. I need it to here. Yeah. Oh, you want it tighter. Good question. First thing you need to do is with a long length like this, we're going to make our eight. So we're going to make a loop and go around. So we've got our figure eight with a long length. Got the eight behind spirit's neck we've got an extra, the extra tail and we're going to follow this eight it's called a retrace because i'm going to follow that line so right here it's trickier to see in this position but i'm going to follow this through i'm going to pull all the way through so now it's now i'm making this tight b and then i'm going to retrace this don't worry there will be another video that i'm going to explain this in greater de detail this is just for ella's sake what we've created is exactly that same visual of the eight and the bite, except I just tied that directly on a retrace eight or a figure eight follow through. So there you go, Ellaby. Um, say goodbye to the people watching. Bye. Bye. Thank you for uh, watching this. We essentially covered the overhand and figure eight, and we sort of looked at making a figure eight on a bite. Next stage will be in the next episode, the next video, we'll be looking at. Um, the double figure out and a bite and the retrace in a little bit more detail. Bye everyone. Bye everyone. Wave. Oh, I forgot to say the Ella for people who listen to the podcast does the end, right? You're the one who says, Muffin to Papa the guy. That was you when you were how old were you? Two. Two. How old are you now? Four. Exactly. Mm -hmm.